Hallelujah. So wonderful to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. And I'm like Brother Dave, I'm still feasting off of Tuesday night's service. Hallelujah. And before that, the last Sunday morning service. And before that, revival. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm still wound up for Amen. revival. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. I wasn't dead before revival, but I tell you what. Hallelujah. I got refired or something. Amen. Hallelujah. My, my, my. Got a fresh touch. Amen. Hallelujah. Stirring in my soul. Hallelujah. And it didn't go away whenever the services ended. Amen. You might have got stoked. Amen. Got stoked. <laughs> Brother Slee said I got stoked. Brother Slee said I got stoked. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. My, my, my. If you have your Bible with you this morning, open it to Exodus, the fourth chapter. Exodus, the fourth chapter. And we're going to, I told you Tuesday night while I was preaching Tuesday night, I told you what I was going to be preaching today. The name of today's sermon is It's Time to Get Your Butt Out of the Way. Hallelujah. Amen. And you'll know what I'm talking about here in a minute. That's a weird name for a sermon. You'll understand it. Not only will you be able to understand it, you'll be able to relate to it. Amen. Hallelujah. It'll feel like it's being preached right at you. <laughs> Amen? Because all of us have done this. Mm -hmm. Amen? There's uh, many times that our butt has kept us from doing things for God. Amen? Amen. And we find Moses here yeah. in the fourth chapter of the book of Exodus. Now we know what happened before that. Mm -hmm. That Moses was in the house of Pharaoh. He'd been raised by Pharaoh's daughter and he had saw one of the soldiers beating one of the Israelites and he killed the soldier and ran for his life. Mm -hmm. There was a price out on his head. and We find him in chapter 3 yeah. on the back side of the desert keeping the sheep of his father-in-law Jethro. Amen? Come on. Hallelujah. So he's out there on the, in the desert keeping the sheep and he sees something. He sees a bush that is burning. Yeah. Now that wasn't all that strange. Amen? There were times that that uh, bushes and trees there would just, it would be so hot and so dry that they would combust. And yeah. so that wasn't the big thing that caught Moses' attention. What caught his attention was that he saw a bush that was burning that was not consumed. Amen? Right. There was a fire burning, but the bush was the same. It had not been consumed. Oh, and right. God speaks to him from this burning bush right. and calls Moses to be the deliverer of God's people. He tells him that the cries of the Israelites has came up before him. Yeah. He tells him that now he needs a deliverer. He needs a spokesman to go. Mm -hmm. To tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Amen. Oh. So he's calling Moses to do that. Mm -hmm. And we pick this up in the fourth chapter, the first verse. This is Moses' response to the Lord and yeah. his call. And Moses answered and said, But, behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice, for they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto thee. So here we find the Lord calling Moses, and Moses saying, But Lord, they won't believe me. They won't believe that you have said anything to me, that you have appeared to me. As a matter of fact, when they find out who I am, they for sure ain't going to listen to me. Amen? When I stand before Pharaoh and they recognize who I am, yeah. they for sure are going to think, yeah, right, like, like this God, this supernatural being that you speak of has appeared to you. So Moses didn't have very much of a high opinion of himself. So he begins to make an excuse. He begins to insert his butt in the middle of this thing and his butt get trying to get in God's will and his God's way, amen, to keep God's will from being done. How many times has God spoke to you to do something and you thought, well, I would, but, amen, amen. I would give, but I can't afford to. 
I would work, but I can't do that. I would work for the Lord, but I can't do that. They won't listen to me. I'm just, they won't pay any attention to me. And that's where we find Moses. We find God Almighty. When he asked him, who am I going to tell them send to, to send me? He said, tell them that I am, that I am has sent you. Amen? Yeah. The I am from the beginning. The creator of the world. Tell them, I'm the one that sent you. And then Moses begins, like many of us do at times, and we have in the past, we let our butt get in the way. Right. And listen to what it says. And the Lord said unto him, what is that in thine hand? Now, I find this real interesting this morning. And he said, it's a rod. And he said, cast it on the ground. Now, the rod within itself was no more than a dead stick. Amen? Right. Now, remember what Moses had just told the Lord. He said, they ain't going to believe me. They ain't going to believe I heard from you. They're not going to believe that you're with me. So in essence, Moses had about as much confidence in himself as he did that old dead stick. Amen? Right. I mean, it was good for a few things. It wasn't good for a whole lot of things. Right. Amen? Well. There was no life in it. Mm -hmm. But that's the way we are today without God. But see, God wasn't calling Moses to go to Egypt in his own strength. Yeah. God wasn't calling Moses to go down and stand before Pharaoh within himself and with his power. He was telling Moses, I will be with you. Yeah. I will speak through you. When God calls you to do something, He's not telling you to go do it on your own. He's asking you to be a vessel for Him to work through so that He can get the work done. Amen? Amen. So he says, what do you got in your hand, Moses? And Moses looks at it and says, well, it's a rod. It's a stick. It's just an old stick. Amen? Yeah. And the Lord tells him, what does He tell him? He tells him to lay it down, cast it to the ground, and he cast it to the ground and it became a serpent. Yeah. And Moses fled from before it. Yeah. And the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thine hand and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand and he caught it and it became a rod in his hand. He said that they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, mm -hmm. the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob hath appeared unto thee. And the Lord said, furthermore, now see, the Lord's trying to show Moses, you don't have to go in your own strength. You don't have to go in your own power. You don't have to go as a dead stick. Because whenever God gets a hold of you, there will be life. Trust me. Whenever God calls you, He will equip you to do. Someone said, God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. Amen? When He calls you, Brother Dave, He will give you the ability to do that if... Right. That which He has called you to do. If you don't let your butt get in the way. Amen? Oh. That's what God was trying to do with Moses. Oh. He was trying to use Moses. A fugitive from the law. And ran from the house of Pharaoh. He had uh, a price on his head. God was trying to use... There's more for you, Moses, than being out here on the backside of the desert and keeping these sheep. I've got a work for you to do. I'm going to use you. I want you to be my vessel. I want you to be my mouthpiece. I want you to be the one that goes down and delivers my people out of the body that they've been in for hundreds of years. I've heard their cry. They're, they're, they're pleading for deliverance and I've heard them. And I'm going to send you to be my vessel. But Moses says, but Lord, I'm not able. But Lord, I can't do it. But Lord, they won't listen to me. It's time for the church. and the, the, It's time for the ones in the pews to get their butt out of the way. Amen. And say, Lord, I know I ain't much by myself. I ain't nothing. But if you use me, I'll be your vessel. I'll lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset me, and I'll be the vessel you want me to be. I don't care if it's cleaning the toilet. I don't care if it's vacuuming the carpet. I don't care if it's cleaning the walls. I don't care what it is, Lord, but I'll do what you want me to do. I'll do what you want me to do. Yes, Lord. I'll get my butt out of the way, and I'll let you do what you want to do. Yes. And that's what God is asking of Moses. He's not asking Moses to go on his own. Right. And he's showing him this with the rod that he turned to a serpent. Mm -hmm. Now he tells him, And the Lord said, Furthermore unto him, Put now thine hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. And he said, Put thine hand into thy bosom again. Mm -hmm. 
And he put his hand into his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign, they, that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe also these two signs, neither hearken unto thy voice, that thou shalt take of the water of the river and pour it upon the dry ground, upon the dry land. And the water which thou takest out of the river shall become blood upon the dry land. Amen. Now we see two different things here that God is trying to show Moses. He's trying to show Moses this will be done of me and my power, not yours. Yeah. This will be supernatural. This deliverance, Moses will not be able to walk out of Israel, patting himself on the back, out of Egypt, patting himself on the back for the deliverance of God's people. Because the plagues that God would send would not be man-made. They would be supernatural. God would get His glory upon the, head, upon the head of every false god that Egypt worshipped and held high. Amen. We've talked about that before. All right. So this would be a supernatural thing. He shows him that with a stick. Moses, you don't have to do it right. of yourself. Amen. You're like that rod that you've got in your hand. Without me, it's nothing but a dead piece of wood. Oh, but with my power, with my strength, with my blessings, it becomes life. Yes, Lord. God can do that with us. You may feel like you're nothing today. You ain't without Him. But with Him, you can do all things. The Bible says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I told you Tuesday night, I've learned two things. Number one, I can't. Number two, He can. Amen? Amen. Number one, I ain't able. Number two, he is able. Amen? Yeah. The Apostle Paul said, I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. I am persuaded that he is able. God's trying to persuade Moses that God is able. Moses don't have to be. That's why our butts get in the way so many times. Because we think we have to do it. We're the ones that have to do it. It has to be done in our strength. No, God never called you to do it. He just went on your own in your own strength. God wants you to be his vessel so that he can do it. Amen. You see, God needs somebody. Yeah. That he can work through. Amen. So that's what he's trying to convince Moses of here. So the first thing he wanted Moses to know this was a supernatural thing. Mm. All I'm asking you to do, Moses, is to be my vessel. Amen. Come on. Another thing he wanted to know, he said, is that that rod, which is useless and dead within itself. Yeah. And see, God knows that. Right. Before He called you, before you were formed in your mother's womb, right. He knew you. Amen? Amen? Right. He knows who you are. He knows your failings and your faults and your failures. He knows your weaknesses. Amen? Amen? He knew who Moses was before He called. But Moses is acting like, wait a minute, Lord, you got the wrong number. You know, sometimes we dial the wrong number. Right. Amen? True. God don't dial wrong numbers. Right. Believe me, church, He has your number. Amen? Right. So He calls up Moses, and Moses is acting to God like, God, you didn't call the wrong man for this job. You're talking about somebody else. That ain't me. Maybe you're in the wrong desert. Maybe you got the wrong shepherd. No, God knew exactly who He had. Amen? Amen. Right. And that's what we do with our butts. We try to convince the Lord that it just can't be. Right. Amen? Come on. And Moses is not through trying to convince the Lord that. Right. You see, it was butts that got in the way of the children of Israel going over instead of wandering 40 years in the wilderness. Come on. Amen? Ten spies came back and basically their message was this. Well, we could, but <laughs> yeah. they're, they're giants over there. They're bigger than we are. We could take them, but we're as grasshoppers in their sight. And even worse than that, we're as grasshoppers in our sight. Right. You see, it don't matter what the devil thinks about you. True. It matters what you think about you. Yes, Amen. Come on. The devil can tell you you ain't nothing all day long. Come on, priest. But when you realize that you are more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ, 
When you realize that you are God's vessel, you are His hand extended, then what the devil thinks about you don't matter so much anymore. Amen? Exactly. And besides, He knows who you are in God. Right. That's why He's telling you that you ain't. Amen? He's a liar and the father of lies. Whatever He tells you, you can, you can trust me this morning. It's just the opposite of what He's saying. Amen? Right. So when the devil tells you that you can't, Brother David, that means you can. When the devil tells you you ain't no good, that means you're, you're, a, you're a good for something. Amen? Amen. So, the ten spies said we can't do it. Same, the same thing with the Goliath and the Israelites that day that they were all had the battle in array and they were all facing down each other. Saul was probably in his tent thinking, well, I'd go out there, but he's bigger than I am. Amen. That's basically what the Israelites thought. They thought, well, we'd go against them, but... Oh, but there was one little shepherd boy that didn't let his butt get in the way. Amen. Amen. He went down there and he said, oh, and he didn't say, I can do it. David can do it. I'm strong enough to do it. No, he said, you come to me with the spirit of sword, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. Amen. That's all God was asking Moses to do here. Amen. He was asking him to go in his name and his power and his might. But then what else does he say to the Lord? Verse 10. And Moses said to the Lord, Oh, my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore nor since thou hast spoken of thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. Well, shucks. I wish the Lord had have known that before he called Moses. Oh. Lord, you really messed up this time. You called a guy that's slow of speech. Some of the scholars say that he stuttered. Some of them just say that he... He was just not comfortable speaking in front of people and he, he wasn't a good public speaker and he was shy or bashful. Yeah. I just wish the Lord had known that. Amen. When he, because if the Lord had just known that, that Moses was not eloquent of speech and that he was slow of speech, surely he wouldn't have asked this man. Oh, the Lord knew already, Moses. Come Amen. On. Quit using your butts and, and get, get out of the way and let God use you. Amen. God knew you couldn't speak good. God knew you were slow of speech. God knew you wasn't eloquent of speech. But you're the one that He called. Amen? Amen. God knew that Amos was not a prophet. He knew that he was not the son of a prophet. He knew that he was the keeper of the sycamore trees. But Amos is the one that God called to be His vessel. Come on, brother. You'll find more times than not in history, the ones that God called are the ones that you scratch your head and wonder. I will never believe that. Yeah. I'd have never believed that God would use them. On, Amen? I'd never believed that God would use them the way right. that He has. Right. Because God likes to take the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So Moses starts explaining his disability to the Lord as if the Lord didn't know it already. Amen? Come on. Did you catch his other butt there? Mm -hmm. But I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. And the Lord said unto him, Oh, I like the way the Lord deals with us. Listen to what he asked old Moses. Verse 11, The Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb, or deaf, or the seeing, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Moses, who created your slow tongue? Come on. Moses, who created you? Yeah. Speaking to him about like he did Job over there when Job was having his pity party. Come on, brother. And the Lord said, Gird up your loins like a man, Job, and come here and let me talk to you. Uh -huh. Where was you at when I created the earth? Right. <laughs> Come on, preach. You talk about somebody being able to put you in your place. God has a way of doing that. Yes, sir. Amen. Right. So he's calling Moses. He's trying to get Moses to go, but Moses can't get his butt out of the way. Mm. He's telling him, I'll be with your mouth. Right. I created your mouth. I will fill your mouth. Right. And he said, O oh Lord, send, I pray thee, by the hand of him whom thou wilt send. In other words, send somebody else. Yeah. That's what we do. Lord, send somebody else. Let somebody else do it. Amen. I don't want, I would, but. I would, but. Yeah. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses and he said, Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well. And also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee. 
When he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. So, if you drop down to verse 17, it says, Take this rod in thine hand, wherewith thou shalt do signs. So, God wanted Moses to go right. of his own accord. But because Moses and his butts and all of that stuff got in the way, Moses let his butt get in the way, amen? All right. And God says, alright, I'll send Aaron with you. Moses would probably live to regret that day. Because Aaron is the one that gave them their golden calf at the foot of the mountain while Moses was up there seeking God for the Ten Commandments and the law. Amen. Aaron's the one that they asked, give us a God we can worship. And he said, bring me your jewelry. Bring me your gold. And Aaron let them make a God. Amen. Amen. Sooner or later, you'll reap what your butt sows. Amen. Come on. Oh. So, so many people called yet unable to get their butt out of the way. Amen. They excused themselves right out of never doing anything for God. I would, Lord, but I'm just not able. Yeah. I would help, Lord, but I just can't do it. I would give, Lord, but I just can't afford to. If that little woman with the meal barrel and the cruise of oil had to let her butt get in the way, she'd have died a quick death. Oh. And not a painless one either. She'd have starved to death. Right. If she'd have told that man of God, mm -hmm. well, I would get you some bread, but right. I can't give you any. You see where I'm going with this this morning, church? Absolutely. Amen. Is this plain enough for you this morning? Amen. Right. This may be a little too plain for some people, but God got to get it down where we understand where the rubber meets the road, where we can figure out exactly what He's trying to tell us. He wants to use you, but you're going to have to get your butt out of the way. Amen? Amen. He wants to work through you, but you're going to have to get your butt out of the way. Amen? Right. Lord, I would, but... Uh, no, He doesn't want to hear that. Uh, he wants to hear us say, Okay, Lord, I know what I am without myself, but yeah. I trust that you... Within myself, but I trust that you would use me. Really? Amen? Amen. I would work in the church, but I just can't do it. I would be faithful to church, but Lord, you know, you understand? No many people I see out. They say, I'd come to church, but I just don't get out. They told me that at Walmart. They told me that at Ryan's. They told me that at the dollar store. I'm beginning to believe the only place you can't get out to is to church. Oh, I preach this morning, amen. Right. I'm beginning to believe the only place you can't make it to is the house of God. Amen. You can make it to Walmart. You can make it to Ryan's. You can make it to the dollar store. You can make it to the fireworks. You can make it to the fair. You just can't make it to God's house, amen. amen. Oh, I better preach this morning. Amen. A lot of people, this church ain't full today. Why? Because their butt kept them home, amen. Right. Amen. True. Amen. Exactly. Go ask them why they wasn't here. Well, I'd have been there, but... I didn't feel good. I'd have been there, but I just don't get out and go nowhere. I'd have been there, but old Sister Myrtle, she's still going down there. If she don't go there no more, then I'll start going there. Amen? Yeah. But until she does, I ain't going. Exactly. No, it ain't Sister Myrtle. It's your butt. Amen? All right. Oh, I could preach this morning. Hallelujah. So many excuse themselves right out of being used of the Lord. Amen. And even worse than that, so many allow their butt yeah. to take them to hell. Amen. How many people are in hell today that sit through altar calls, Brother mm -hmm. Lee? Mm -hmm. And Brother Dave, they thought, yeah. well, I'd go to the altar, but yeah. I'm afraid of what people think Amen. about me. I'd go to the altar, but I'm not ready. Come on. That's basically what Agrippa told Paul when he stood before him. Yeah. He said, you've almost persuaded me, but I'm not persuaded yet. Amen. So many people. Yeah. Listen to this. Go with me to Luke 14. Come on. Luke the 14th chapter. Luke the 14th chapter. In the 15th verse. Luke 14 
to 15. <clears throat> and when one of them that said it meet with him heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is he that eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then said he unto them, A certain man made a great supper, and he sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. Now we see, and we understand, and I don't have to explain it very much to us how that our butt keeps us from doing things for God. Amen. Now we're going to see how that our butt can cause us to miss it completely. It says in verse 18, And they all, with one consent, began to make excuse. The first one said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground and I must needs go see it. I pray that he had me excused. So what was he saying, Brother Billy? He was saying, well, I would, but I have bought a piece of ground and I must needs go see it. The next one said, well, you know, it sounds great. I would, but I have bought five yoke of oxen and I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. The next one says, I would, but I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. I would, but. I would come to the altar, but. I would surrender myself to the drawing of the Holy Spirit that is dealing with my heart, but. I've heard people say, I'd come to church, but I just ain't good enough. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. You might as well throw that Throw that off the train. You ain't never going to be good enough. Amen? No. None of us are ever going to be good enough. We've got to come to Him as we are. Mm. These people all began to make excuse. They had an opportunity to go to the marriage supper. Mm. They allowed their butt to keep them away. Come on. And they didn't get to go. As a matter of fact, they were labeled as not worthy to partake of the marriage supper. Why? Because they allowed their butt to get in the way. I would go, but I have to do this. I would serve God, but I have to work. I would serve God, but my wife won't let me. I would serve God, but my husband won't let me. I would serve God, but my family won't let me. I would, I would go to church, but I don't like Brother Schleese. I would go to church, but, 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 but. I would turn to God. I would surrender. We held a camp meeting several years ago now. Yeah. It wasn't a camp meeting, I'm sorry. It was just a Saturday afternoon service outside. All right. And I preached. Mm -hmm. And I gave the altar call. Mm -hmm. And not long after that, a man spoke with me that had been sitting in a car listening. And these are the words he said to me. He said, I really felt the Spirit of God. He said, I sat there and I wept. And I would have came down to that altar when you gave the altar call. Yeah. But I was afraid of what people would think of me. Yeah. Come on. But. That's right, brother Bill. But. Paul Levine, I've told you this story a hundred times, talked to that little 16 year old girl during his revival, trying to get her to come to the altar. Mm. She said, I want to accept the Lord, but I'm still young. Yeah. I got a lot of living to do. Amen. But mm. oh, you see this yeah. morning how how important it is mm. what the Lord's trying to tell us today. Not only will your butt keep you from doing what God's called you to do, yeah. but it'll cause you to miss out completely if you ain't careful. Amen. Come on. So that servant came, I'm in verse 21, that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said unto the servant, Go out quickly to the streets, the lanes of the city, bringing hither the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. Mm. The servant said, Lord, it is done. There is still room. Amen. Amen. And the Lord said unto his servant, Go out to the highways and the hedges, compel them to come in, that my house may be full, may be filled. For I say unto you that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. Why? Because they let their butt get in the way. Amen. Amen. My, my, my. Going to make you miss out completely. Amen. Amen. True. Going to make you miss out completely. Absolutely. I want to have Lord, but you can just fill in the blank. I would, 
Lord back. And then I just let y'all fill in the rest of it because one excuse carries about as much weight as the other. Amen. Amen. Because when we stand before Him, we will be without excuse. Yes, sir. Amen. True. The Bible tells us here that these people, because of their excuses, excuse themselves right out of the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. True. There was a man that came to Jesus in Luke 9 and 57, and I'm trying to close. It says, It came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto the Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever wherever, 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 thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes and birds yeah. of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. Wow. And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury the dead. Yeah. But go thou and preach the kingdom of God. And another said unto the Lord in verse 61, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell which are at my Father's house. And Jesus tells this man, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Oh. Brother Bill called me about 12.30 last night after he heard what my Actually, Sister Nancy texted me and said if I was still up to call Brother Bill. Mm -hmm. After he heard what the sermon name was going to be, after he went to bed, the Lord gave him this little sentence here. He said, I thought you might want to use this in the morning, so I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget it. Sheep don't butt, goats do. All right. True. Amen. That's the truth. Sheep don't butt. Goats do. Amen. But Lord, I would but one excuse is good as the other. One day we will all stand without excuse and give an account for all of our butts. Amen. Amen. That's true. All of our butts, one day we'll we'll give an account for that. The rich young ruler that came to Jesus mm. said, What must I do? I want this I want eternal life. I want to follow you. What am I got to do, Lord? He said, keep the commandments. He said, oh, I've kept them from my youth. Yeah. Jesus turns to him and said, go sell everything you got and give it away. Yes. Pick up your cross and follow me. But this young man went away sad. Why? Because he had much stuff. He was rich. He had a lot of things. In other words, he made the decision there that day, I would do that, but I've got too much stuff. I can't let go of it. I can't let go of it. And that's the last we hear of that young man. That rich young ruler. Listen to me. Out there by radio and by video today. Choose your decision very carefully because your next decision may be your last decision. Amen. God's calling you today. Right. Don't let your butt get in the way. Amen. Don't grip the back of the pew during the altar call and say, I'd go, yeah. but don't sit and listen to this preacher preach and say, well, God's called me to preach. He's called me to sing. He's called me to work, but no, we're running out of time, folks. Amen. Amen. We're running out of time. We're running out of, it's time we got this stumbling block out of the way. Amen. Your butt has become a stumbling block in your life to keep you from going on for God. Amen. We're running out of time. And your butt's going to cause you to miss it. I would. But yeah. I just can't. Come on, oh. We're talking. This is a matter of life and death. Come on. Amen. Amen. This is a matter of life and death. Yes. These people that this king bid to the wedding, if you'll read that, the, the, the account of that in Matthew, it said they all begin to make light of it. Right. That's what we find today. People making light of the call of God. People making light of the Bible. People making light of church. People making light of the spiritual condition that they're in. Everything else takes preeminence. Everything else is more important. They would do that. They would, they would live for God, but they had more important things to do. They would give, but they can't afford to. They would work, but they're just not able. Come on, Brother Bill. Tell it. 
They all begin to make light of it, and all of them went their way. All of them went their way. One to his farm, uh -huh. another to his merchandise. Now, this is an account that we read in Luke. This is this is coming from Matthew. Yeah. This king says, "Go to the highways, compel them to come in." But what I want to what I want to leave with you this morning uh -huh. is that when the king came in to see his guests, when the house was full. He got to looking around and he saw one there that didn't have a wedding garment on. Come on, brother. Brother Billy, where did this man come from? I'll tell you who I believe he was. I believe he was one of those that let his butt get in the way. But then when he decided later, well, I've got time to go now. Right. I've took care of my business now. Yeah. But now it was too late. Right. Now it was too late. Now we find him at the wedding without the proper garment. Amen. Oh, yeah, brother. And he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. This is Matthew 22. You can read this later. It's Matthew, the 22nd chapter. And he said unto him, Friend, how camest thou to in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. You listen, you hear me? Amen. No excuse. Right. He had no reason to give him. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness. Yes. There should be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I submit you to, to you today and I believe that this man missed out because his butt got in the way when he was invited to come. Amen. He one day he decided, well, I've got my oxen. I don't know which one it was. i got my oxen taken care of. i got my wife appeased. I've got, I've got the land looked at. I've got that to take care of. <coughs> now I'm ready to go. Mm -hmm. Then it was too late. That's where it's going to be for a lot of people. They're going to get ready one day too late. Listen to me. We're talking about the difference between heaven and hell. Amen. Brother Dave, we're talking about the difference between life with Jesus or suffering throughout eternity. Yes. All because you let your butt talk you out of it. Amen. That's true. Oh, my, my, my. Don't let your butt get in the way. Amen. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord Jesus. Help us this morning to sell out. Help us to clean out our closet of all of the butts that we have allowed to become our crutch to keep us from doing for You that which You have called us to do. If there be one listening today or watching the video that have time and time again heard Your call and felt the tug at their heart and it brushed You aside saying, I would, but... Lord, I ask You to shine Your light on every excuse and every but that they have ever used that has ever stopped them from taking that step. Expose it for the useless, dangerous, stumbling block that it is today. In Jesus' name. It's time, church, for us to get our butt out of the way. Do what God's called us to do because night cometh when no man will work. Amen. Amen. Right. Be the light you're supposed to be today because we're running out of time. Some people have let their butt cause their light to go almost completely out. Amen. I would, but. I was going to, but. Mm. I hope somebody got something out of the Word this morning. Amen. Someone else have something before we go. Thank <laughs> you.